I'm excited to show you for the first time the new fit and engagement scoring now available in your auto account. This is an entirely new feature that'll help you score people based on demographics and behaviors at every stage of the customer journey. So instead of relying on a single score that mixes demographics and behavior data and doesn't degrade over time like most lead scoring systems, this system allows you to configure things however you would like and for behavior-based interactions allows those scores to degrade over time. So when you look at a score, for example, here like the product score, it'll always be relevant to that particular user and their level of engagement at any given time. So you can see that these scores are now available in the overall data model. And I've just added them in here, the product score and fit score that I created earlier just to demonstrate how this works. And they're also available just as fields in the filter control as well. So you've got product score here. I could say I want greater than three rocket emojis. And I also want to look up my fit score. And I also want greater than three emojis. And this can help me understand, especially for people that are signing up to my product, that these people have a high level of uh, product engagement and they're a good fit for our business. So you can see how I'm easily able to segment the people that I should be targeting. Maybe that's assigning them to your sales team or just sending them uh, different marketing engagements to try and convince them to buy or speed up that process. And likewise, for people that have a low product score and a high fit score, you can focus journeys on trying to get them to activate more and use the product or even just schedule uh, someone on the team to give them a call and see what's going on. So to set up the new scoring feature, you just navigate to set up, click customer data, and then you want to click scores. And so for, for many people that have, have heard me talk about lead scoring over the years, I've always said that I, I think lead scoring is pretty stupid because you tend to just randomly allocate points for different um, you know, demographics or, or behaviors. And a, a great example of that is say you know you give someone 100 points for the job title marketing manager and then you give them 20 points every time they log into your product if they log in five times they're essentially going to get the same score as someone who is your ideal fit or, or the best fit for your business so it, it tends to be the case where you know lead scores just don't actually help you do much and, and sales doesn't really trust them and you know, marketing uses them because that's all they've got. Um, but everyone realizes that these scores are, are, are pretty terrible. So what we've done is given you the ability to add different criteria to scores and create different scores. So this this example here of the fit score um, has a series of, of filters. And this is just saying job title is marketing manager or job title is CMO. So we're going to boost that one way up. And then we're just looking at different regions where... Um, you know, we typically sell into. And then below that, we're looking at just excluding job titles like account executive or executive assistant because we don't sell to them and we're just killing all of those uh, potential points. So we're just weighting it in the opposite direction. And so this is an example of just a demographic based score. Um, and it's just going to stay the same over time because those demographics obviously are pretty consistent. Um, and you can see under score format here, we've, we've selected normalized score. And what that does is it creates a score out of five emojis, five being the, uh, you know, the most uh, fit in this case and, uh, and no emojis being uh, sort of no score. You can also turn this into a whole number score if you prefer that methodology, but I would highly recommend using the normalized calculation uh, because then what it does is it stops these silly outliers in your scores where you randomly are like, oh, CMO is 300 points and you just get these heavily skewed scores and it's really hard for the team long-term to interpret um, the difference between say a five emoji score and uh, a, a three emoji score if it's a number. So between five and three is really easy to understand, but between 750 and 10, uh, it, you know, it, it just creates problems. Um, so you can pick different emojis. We just think it, it looks really cool and keeps everyone engaged in the score. Um, to basically represent the particular score. You can rename it at any time too, if you pick the wrong name. And we also have this half-life period. And let me demonstrate that with the product score here. So with the product score, this is just purely a behavior-based score. So 
In this case, I'm saying the scoring criteria is signed in, created project and added team member. And I've weighted all of those appropriately. We're also using the normalized score with the rockets. And below that, we've got the score half-life period. And so the half-life period is the period with which the lead score is reduced by half during that period. So basically what it's doing is degrading over time in that seven day period. So they've got to keep showing good product behavior in this case in order for that score to stay high. Um, and these are just using custom activities. So you can use any activity uh, in here as well. So if you just wanted to create a more traditional lead score, you could be like, you know, every time they open an email, they get maybe two points and add that criteria in. And you could add in here, uh, like clicked email, uh, that might be like say 10 points just to see engagement here as well. So that's just an example of adding different criterias in here. Now you can also add demographic to a behavior based score. So these are primarily behaviors, but we could go back to our example before where we just give a higher weighting of say, uh, like let's say 300 points. Um, if the job title um, is a CMO, and so you can mix demographics and behavior-based scores. And the cool thing is it will actually hold the score of the demographic because it, it doesn't really change, but it'll, it'll then half-life the, the score period based on these behaviors. So it just, it means that you can mix demographics and behavior for the first time. And it's, it's going to normalize and represent the true, true um, value of what that score should be over time. So how do we create these scores? You just click new score. Um, you, you can pick an emoji. So this could be um, our, our happy emoji here. And we could call this our, you know, customer score. Um, you can update the half-life period however you want. This might be like a 90 day score. So we'll put that in. And then it's just a case of going out and building different criteria. So we can come in here and just pick um, different activities. And again, you've got access if you've got different applications connected, like I've got Salesforce connected to this account. So um, you could even do like, you know, loan created um, is it's a maximum of 500 points. Um, and so you've got all these activities in here to basically um, build out different scores. So that's how you build the scores out. Um, once you build them out and turn them on, they're just available in the, in the customer model. So if I click into Sarah Smith here, I actually have the scores in the data model and I can, you know, move them around where I want, um, and, and put them up here like this. So you can see everything in context and know how they're being scored. Now, when we look at that in a, in a campaign, so you could go and create a journey based on them matching some of this criteria. So we'll call it score journey. And in here, we'll say we want it, you know, if their product score uh, is greater than say three, actually that's an org level score. So we'll just do it at a person level to keep it simple. Uh, so we'll say greater than three um, and their fit score is also greater than three, then we'll start this journey. So then you can go ahead and, and send them an email or an engagement email based on them having that particular score. Now you can also use these scores in conditions and filters as well. So you could, you could keep checking in on the score. Like, is it still greater than three? Um, and you know, and then that way, you, you, because this score is changing over time, you can keep checking that it, it's related to continue down a certain path. So that's how you can use scores in campaigns. And obviously you can do single send emails off them as well. The final thing I'll quickly show you is in reporting. So you can use these scores in reports and it's really cool. So uh, say I wanna use my signed up activity. I can then go and group it by the attribute and I'll click over to fields and I'll say product score. And this is really powerful because it breaks down signups over this period, so 30 days, into the score. So I can now see that 323 of my signups are very engaged in my product. Um, and I've got a bit of work to do over here because 155 is showing no engagement. And likewise, you could do that for our other score that we had. So our, our fit score here, um, this one's really biased because I set it up poorly, but you get the idea. Now, 
Another type of report you can look at over time is just say a column chart. And you can do this on all the report types, but I just find these ones most interesting. So we can say signed up here and then group it by an attribute and we'll say product score and we'll do it as uh, weeks here and we'll stack the values. And now we can see uh, in this column chart, the different signups by product score. So it's pretty damn cool. You can pin these to dashboards, use them everywhere. Uh, and you can even, even sync those field values to your CRM. So, so your sales teams are fully aware of, of what the different scores are and how it's influencing things. So that's a, a relatively quick look at the new score feature to access it. It's available in your account right now. Just go to set up customer data scores and uh and yeah best of luck creating different scores across the customer life cycle